Hey guys, so we're going to be looking into another part of the beginner C Sharp series, and this is going to be looking more um, thoroughly at Booleans. Now, we've covered it a few times in the other scripts that we've done, and a Boolean, all it is, is a 1 or a 0 or a true and false. And you might want to use this in a lot of different elements when you're writing code, and it might be to check something to not make something happen unless something is true or false and you know it's a nice way to just manage the code and you know think of something that you might want to do so we'll start off and we'll write a new script so we'll go create c sharp script and i will call this booleans and we'll use this as just a sort of an example script open up that in um, visual studio or mono developer whatever you've got and then we'll start out and we've got our beginning class now what we can do is I'll get rid of the two functions that start there because we're just going to sort of start from the beginning. So like we've done before, we can have public and private variables and we can, you know, we can do different things there. So what I'll do is I'll start by writing a boolean. So we'll write public bool and we can say that public bool is true. So if we save that out and we go to Unity, and we go into the player, let's say, and I just drag that on to the player, booleans there, you can see that is true, is available in the inspector, and you can tick it and it would be true, or if you untick it, it would be false. And we can do different things depending on how you want to use that. You can start by writing void start, two brackets, and two curly brackets below. And you can do things like, say you originally start the uh, game and you run this script, you want to say that is true is equal to true. So what will happen here is that normally when it starts, or as we are in just in the editor, it's not actually true. But when we press play, we expect, seeing as though it's on the start function, the start function happens as soon as this script is active and uh, we run the game, we expect that to have a tick and it will become true and you can see that now it is true. So we can do little things with that. You know, we can do different things. We can write a um, private bool is happening. This is just sort of some examples. You won't be able to see that in the inspector unless you serialize the field, but that's not something I'll really go into today. If you do that, you can Google it and um, you know, you can then see private variables in the inspector, you know, so you'd be able to tick and um, cross them. Um, but the public one just allows us to maybe access them from other scripts, and that's probably what you'll like to do, um, you know, further down the line. So, say in the, in the start, you know, we can do exactly the same thing, so that we can set is happening equal to true as well. And it'll be just sort of, it'll be encapsulated to this class if it's private. So we don't have to use it anywhere else and it doesn't get confusing. Now we can do other things. So say we need to check something in our void update, for instance. We'll just do this similar thing. And we need to say that maybe on our void update, we want to do something like, this is just a brief example. We can use debug.log and then say... I'm activated with in quotes and a bracket and a semicolon. And what this will do is that it'll post um, I'm activated loads of time into the log and it'll just keep on going forever and ever. And you can see on this side, you can see it stacking up because it's doing whatever frame rate this game is, it'll do um, one of these calls or one of the update calls every frame. So you see it's just stacking up a long way. but you know, we might not want to do that all the time and that might not be the logic that you want for your game. So what you could potentially do is that we could say that if is true um, in brackets, we can have two curly brackets below just to encapsulate the statement that we've said. So what we want to say that if is true, if that's true, then we want to do this. And what we could do is we could say, we could say that is, if is happening with two curly brackets below, we can potentially say something else. We could set this to is happening. And I'll give you the example that when you're uh, sort of understanding the booleans when you're writing them in the script, is if you write in the, in the brackets, if, and you just write the actual variable name itself, that will just mean true 
is it set to true if you put an exclamation mark before the sort of declaration name of your boolean it will it will ask if it's false because the exclamation mark sort of means do the opposite to what it originally is so in this case we'll say that if is true is false it will say i'm activated if is happening um is equal to true then it'll do is happening so i'll have a little look at that in the game So we can see that because is true is currently true, we expected it to be false for it to report anything. But is happening is happening all the time because we kept that variable to true in the um, start function. Now, if I set this to false, you will see that now because it's running, they'll run both of those lines. You know, we could do something if we control this. So we could say that if, you know, is true is false, for instance, we could say that debug.log I'm activated, then we could say that is happening. We want that to be equal to false when this happens, which means that this statement won't be equal to true anymore. It will set it to false because the start only works at the beginning and the update works all the time. And you just need to apply this logic to anything that you do. So what I'll do is I'll set this to pub public just so we can see it. So you can expect that if is true is false, will um it will start posting i'm activated but then it will say that is happening is equal to false and if that's the case due to our if statement then it won't be posting this line anymore so what we'll do is we will play again i'll clear this i'll press play and you can see that is happening is actually um running because that's what the boolean now we wanted to say that if is true is equal to false it should automatically set is happening to false so what this means is that is happening now stopped because we told it to be false and i'm activated is now running because that's the boolean that we were after it's not necessarily good to put a debug.log line always in uh, you know say update or any of the code it's just good for debugging purposes but you know you just want to be able to manage your booleans for what you've got and then be able to change them according to the code. So all you have to do is write the variable name, set equal to true or false. You can write checks to check whether it's true or false. You can declare it at the top as public or private, and you can write it pretty much anywhere in your script to make some logic be on or off, depending on what you want to do. Okay, so I'll give you another example, is that we could do it with, let's say I go to the trigger event um, script that we did. And you can see that here, we've got something which um, sets the components true and false. But I'm not really concerned about this for now. I'm just concerned about the trigger event that we've got. So if I give you sort of maybe a, a practical example, is that say we've got public, and I'll call this game object maybe cube one and public game object cube two now we've got that we've got cube one and cube two now but we want to do something with that so we want to decide when we should be able to deactivate and activate cube one and cube two without having to have you know many different scripts and things like that so we could potentially add a public bool as cube bool and what we could say that here is that if cube bool and we'll leave it just with its name which will say that if cube bool is equal to true we'll say that cube one dot set active is set to false but what we could also do is say that else cube two dot set active is false so what this is meaning is that if um, cube bull is ever equal to true, we'll set cube one to false. And if there's anything else, so if cube bull is um, false, so if cube bull was like uh, this at the time when we're playing, it will set cube two to false. So we can give this a test. We can see it on our trigger event. You can see that cube bull uh, is equal to false currently. 
I will, there's cube two. I will create one called cube one. So you can see it there, one and two. Now I go to the trigger. I'm just gonna add cube one and two. And what we expect to do is from this code, if we walk into the trigger and it's the player that walks into the trigger, if cube bull is equal to true, then we'll set this, set the cubes, one cube to false. Um, now, if cube bull is equal to false, then we'll set cube two. In this instance, when we walk through the collider, cube bull, bull is equal to false to begin with. So it will, should do cover this else, else statement and it should deactivate cube two. So what we'll do is we'll go into there We'll walk into the trigger and you'll see that cube two was deactivated. Now, similar, if we now set cube bool to true and we press play, we expect to number one to disappear because that's what we wanted to do. You could even do a similar thing here. So you could say that when you walk into um, this trigger here, you could say that you want cube bool to be equal to true when you walk into the collision. And then what we could do is we could then run our own custom function. We could just call this cubes with two brackets and a semicolon. And then underneath this second to last curly bracket, we'll write void cube two brackets and two curly brackets below. And what we want to say in cube is the um, cube, sorry. We will say that if cube bool um, is true like that, then we want cube one dot set active is false and cube two set active is false. So it pretty much does the same things apart from the fact that when we walk into the collision, it will set cube bool, which is normally false to true. And then when we straight after that line that we've just done there, it will run this line, run to this function, and it'll say, oh, is cube bull true? And we'll go, yeah, because we've just changed it. So now you'll turn those two things off. If you see here, well, so when we test it, we need to make sure cube bool is false. So when we play it, it nothing happens. It, when we walk into the trigger, they both get deactivated because it became true and it ran that next um, function and the lines of code in there. Now, the reason why I put it in its own function here is because say we could put it like in here in the update function and we're checking every frame if it needs to be true or not. It's not necessarily a good way to check in the update function if something is true unless it's something that needs to be updated all the time. Because if you just check in its own function, this is only run pretty much one time. And that's very well sort of optimized. But like I say, it really depends what you're doing. If it's something like um, you need to update some numbers on the screen or you need to check whether you know your stamina has gone down, you probably want to do it in an update because you need to be updating it all the time. So it gives visual feedback to the player. But whereas this only required, um, you know, a few lines of code executed once sort of um, sequentially one after another. And it just makes it easier and more manageable as you get, you know, further down in your development cycle. You can now set this boolean to private because you don't need to see it in the inspector just to keep it more refined. And we're just changing and managing booleans as we go along. So I hope this maybe cleared up some things and sort of ironed out some issues that you might have had when needing to check when things are true or false. So thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Cheers.